Good morning, everyone. Uh, lots, uh, lots there. If you want to check that out online, it's from the Bible Project. Just some, some great stuff. Uh, it's, it's all part of growing in, in Christ. And, and we, we, we started this series, What is the Gospel? We said we had three purposes for the series. One was to grow in Christ. It's our theme for the year. The second was to prepare for Easter, which is coming. And the third was to deepen our both our understanding and the living out of, of the gospel, of the good news. We've named that the gospel literally means good news. It's, it's the good news of Jesus Christ. His story is life, the life he invites us into. It's big. It changes everything. And so a question that's become a part of the series is, what's so good about this good news? That might be a, a question to filter everything you hear through this morning. What's so good about this good news? Today we're talking about law and grace. My sense is that when it comes to law, there's two kinds of people. There's some who really love the law, love the rules, love the guidelines, makes things black and white. I see people looking around at each other. That's cool. Some people, the law is uh, something that is there uh, as a... Um, to be managed, to be manipulated, to find our way around, if, if you will, just uh, kind of how we're, we're made, you know. I remember back uh, when our when our uh, middle son Cameron was uh, playing soccer, and uh, he was he was early on, and so the, the coach had a great strategy, and, and you would get a, out there with your child and play a little bit, and so Cameron fired one at me, just hammered it, and, and it was going to go past me, so I held out my hand, and I stopped the ball, and as soon as I did, I realized, well, that's not right, I'm not teaching him the rules by doing that, so I said, hey, Cam, so sorry, man, that was wrong, that's against the rules, I shouldn't use my hand, he looks at me, he looks around, and he says, that's okay, Dad, coach didn't see, <laughs> and how quickly we can get into a place where rules only matter if we get caught you know it's it's so hey rule i don't know where you're at when it comes to law the law and thinking about the law in the bible um th this is really important there's lots about the law as we heard in that in that video the torah was mentioned and, and really when we're talking about law of god we're talking about the torah the law of god the torah is the law of god as revealed to moses and recorded in the first five books of the hebrew scriptures of the old testament of, of our bible so that's what the law is in the law of God, the Torah, and you'll find it there. One of the assumptions is that we think about law the same way today when we hear that word as they did when they named it as Torah, when, when the Bible, you know, when, when this was happening. And, and there's a, quite a big difference. Often we think about law, I think, as um, something that we'll be punished if we, if we break. There's a sense of that behind what, what law might mean for us when we use the word today. The law, as Jen mentioned in the children's time, the Hebrew definition of Torah really refers to a set of instructions, which, which is quite different. In some ways, the way we see the law will impact the way we see God, or the way we see God might impact the way we see the law. If, if the law is about a God behind it who is waiting for us to break these laws and pounce and punish us, that's not really good news, is it? But if the law, which is the Torah, is a set of guidelines, a, a, a set of instructions to help us live in a way that we will be blessed and so will those around us, Coming from a God who loves us and made us and knows us, that's a very different way of looking at what the law is. And so this passage, I think, summarizes in some ways how the Israelites would have seen the law when they were um, looking at it the way the Torah really represents. That coming from a God who we are in relationship with, that's the key of this, a God who we're in relationship with who loves us. Deuteronomy chapter 26, verses 16 and 19 says, The Lord your God commands you this day, to follow these decrees and laws, carefully observe them with all your heart and with all your soul. There's another passage in Deuteronomy 6 that suggests that we try to get these laws, this way of life, if you will, try to get it within us, to get it within us, to get it within our children and our children's children, to pass it on as who we are. You have declared this day that the Lord is your God and that you will walk in obedience to him, that you will keep his decrees, commands, and laws that you will listen to him. There's a sense of, of relationship here behind these, these instructions, these guidelines for life. And the Lord has declared this day that you are his people. I love this. His treasure, treasured possession, as he promised, that you are to keep all his commands. Again, there's this relationship built in. He has declared that he will set you in praise, fame, and honor, high above all the nations he has made, and that you will be a people holy to the Lord your God as he promised. There's a word that isn't captured in this passage here that's called covenant. And in many ways, the law is a covenant between God and God's people. In our day and age, very similar to 
a wedding, a marriage, when, when we make vows with each other. There's a sense of desiring to live this way, not being forced into it, not looking like we're going to get punished if we don't live up to these guidelines or instructions. We, we, we say these very powerful words to each other, in richer and in, in sickness and in... These are big, this is big stuff. And there usually is a sense that this isn't dragging us into something we don't want to do. It's not a have to, it's I get to. I get to live into this because love is at the center. Love is at the center of this covenant as a couple makes vows. Love is at the center of this relationship between God and God's people. And that's underneath the law. So the law can actually be good news. It can be really good news for us when we look at it that way. But sometimes, as we saw in that video, we, we lose our way. Even if we get to a point where we can see the law like this, the Torah, a set of instructions given with great love to live a way of life in which we're blessed and everyone else, we can, we can get that, we can understand that, but we can still, like the pattern in the biblical history and the people of the Israelites, we can still lose our way over, over time. I, uh, I find this with flossing. <laughs> you know, I know flossing is good for me. Every time I go to the dentist, I'm told, I'm asked, I feel guilty, I get back on board, I do it for a week, and I lose my way. Back to the pattern just kind of continues. You know, I'm not going to ask for a show of hands who flosses here and who doesn't, because we're in a, you know, but, but and I, I, so we get it. We get it. It makes sense how this can happen over time. And so the good news is that God came in Jesus to try to answer that one once and for all. Matthew chapter 5, verse 70 to 20. This is in the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus says, because you see, sometimes there was this, this sense, because Jesus was, was so um, like this with the Pharisees, the ones who were really upholding the law, that, that you could think that Jesus came to get rid of the law, but he did not. And it's very clear in this passage, and we'll try to give some examples to show how Jesus came to fulfill the law, not abolish it. Jesus says, do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them but to fulfill them. For truly I tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. The law is good. It's how it gets operated that is sometimes the problem. Therefore, anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commands and teaches others accordingly will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. Because some, some are going down that direction. When we talk about the kingdom of heaven here, we're not necessarily talking about where we go when we die. Again, we're talking about that Lord's prayer piece where we're saying um, heaven is coming to earth. God is here now. And we can live in a way that helps to bring the kingdom of God to earth when we live according to these instructions that God has given us. And then Jesus says finally, but whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. Jesus came not to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law. And that's where grace starts to come in through Jesus. There's a, there's a great example, Jen mentioned it in children's time, where Jesus is, he's on the Sabbath, he's walking through a field. This is a slightly different story than Jen used, but he's walking through a field and, and his disciples pick some grain and the Pharisees get all over him and they say, whoa, whoa, that's wrong, it's the Sabbath, you shouldn't be doing that. And, and Jesus really kind of defends them and he, he summarizes his... his um, is defense with this. In Mark 2, verse 27, he says, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. The Sabbath was meant to be, as the law is, it's one of the, it's one of the laws, one of the rules, one of the guidelines, instructions for life. The Sabbath was meant to be a gift, not a burden. And sometimes the way the Pharisees were presenting it, it, be, it was becoming a burden. It was meant to be a, a gift. And the Sabbath, boy, man, I don't know in a time in history where the Sabbath could be more relevant and necessary for us. With all the information coming our way, with all the, the, the busyness of, of our lives. And the gift of the Sabbath wasn't to, to do it in an exactly same way for everybody. It was to recognize that every seven days God invites us to have some rest. How does that sound? That's the gift of the Sabbath. Jesus came not to abolish the law but to 
fulfill it. The, the, the bullseye markers behind me, for those that are online, uh, are, and, and for us here, we, we have a resource called the bullseye. We, we name these practices, um, these markers that we encourage people to live into as followers of Jesus. But it's not meant to be the law in the sense of um, we're, we're watching one another and coming down on each other when we don't live into them. They're meant to be a gift to help us grow as a follower of Jesus. Spiritual practices, spending time with God, worshiping together like we're doing here today, authentic community, serving, giving generously, sharing Christ. Those are things that we invite people to do as a way of life, as a follower of Jesus the bullseye was not made for man or woman, <laughs> but we were made for the bullseye. This is a way to just to grow as a, in Christ as we, as we live in, into that. The, um, the grace of Jesus comes when we recognize that he came, again, to not to abolish the law, but to fulfill the, the law. It also comes in, in the summary that Jesus gives us of the law. And we've heard that already today a couple times, love God and love neighbor. Where this passage comes from in Mark chapter 12, you see, the, there was these conversations going, this little bit of a debate on uh, some, of the, some of the law. Should we pay taxes? Jesus said yes, by the way. <laughs> uh, there were some other things. And then finally, get, they say, okay, Jesus, so what is, what is the greatest command? And this is the passage from Mark chapter 12. How do you summarize all this stuff? One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating about these laws, these things. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked him, Of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and with all your strength. Love God with all that you are. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no greater commandment than these. Well, said the teacher, the man replied, You are right in saying that God is one, and there is no other but Him. To love Him with all your heart, all your understanding, with all your strength, to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all of these burnt offerings and sacrifices. All the law can be summarized like that. Love God and love your neighbor. When Jesus saw that He had answered wisely, He said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And from then on, no one dared ask him any more questions. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? So, Jesus simplifies the law for us, which is really quite full of grace, isn't it? Don't worry about it all. If you love God and love each other, the rest will take care of itself. So, how hard can that be? Yeah, exactly. And that's where Jesus' grace really comes in because it, it's simple to perhaps remember, but it can be hard to live out. And Jesus gave us his spirit to help us live into this way of life. So part of loving God is recognizing that we're loved. On those days where we beat ourselves up, there's something called grace that we can receive. How about getting along with each other? In the New Testament, there is so much written to the early church on being united, on, on getting along with each other, just love each other, G Jesus says. Sometimes that can be hard to, to do. Sometimes alignment and agreement aren't the same things. We can disagree with each other, but we can still be aligned. That comes through God's grace. The fruits of the Spirit, in Galatians chapter 5, the, the fruits of the, the Spirit, kindness, self-control, love, joy, Patience. Yeah, exactly. The Holy Spirit can give us these fruits of the Spirit, even something as real as patience. Yesterday, I shared the story with our, with our Alpha group. We, had, we celebrated communion together. and uh, talking about how I, I went out yesterday morning to get some bread for the communion at, at Alpha. And uh, I, I had left just enough time to get there on time. So, yeah, exactly. So, I mean, I was going to be late for sure. And so, anyway, I stopped at, at our local bakery, and it was just before 8 o'clock, and I assumed it was open early. It didn't open till 8 o'clock. So, all of a sudden, like, my world is just turned upside down. And I'm like, what in the world is going on here? How can this bakery not open up in time for me to get bread? For the, you know, so I, I decided, oh, on my way, there's got to be another bakery. I found another bakery, and uh, it was open, and it was packed with people. And I'm like, what are all these people doing here? 
on a day when I just, and so I, you know, I had a beautiful couple in front of me and they, they order this fancy coffee and I'm, I'm standing there waiting while this, um, you know, the, the person working there is making the coffee and it's taking a long time and I'm losing it. Like I'm trying to look nice, but I'm losing it inside. I'm looking around thinking, how could all these people be having such a good time resting on a Saturday morning when I need bread right now? You know, and all of a sudden it hit me. All of a sudden the Holy Spirit showed up and I heard one word and the word was this. Really? <laughs> and with that, there was this sense of recognizing that I could live in a different way in that very moment. That I didn't have to be anxious and worried and impatient. That's part of what the Holy Spirit can do. It's part of the gift of grace that God gives to us. In Galatians Chapter 5, verse 4 and 6. There's some powerful verses here. They're, they're, Paul is trying to get at something that they were struggling with around circumcision. A piece of the law that some took more seriously than they needed. They got lost in this conversation. And Jesus tries to bring them, Paul tries to bring them back through Christ to this freedom that we have in Jesus. He says, you are trying to be justified by the law. Uh, sorry, you, you, you who are trying to be justified by the law have been alienated from Christ. You're so focused on that that you're missing the freedom that Jesus came to give you, this thing called grace. You have fallen away from it. For through the Spirit, we eagerly await by faith the righteousness for which we hope. So through the Spirit, we await this, this righteousness, not just for our own lives, living in a way that we're blessed and that we bless others, but righteousness for the, our world. This gospel is good news. It's bigger than just us. We're part of something bigger, bringing the kingdom of God to planet Earth. For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. Love God. Love one another. That's all that matters. And so at the end of the day, there's this great reversal that Jesus seems to do. This would be a summary of it. The good news is that we don't have to do this on our own. That Jesus came to set us free from a religion, whatever that might be, of trying to be good enough and instead embraces us with this transforming love. And so this reversal, this great reversal that Jesus has done, maybe it isn't law and grace. Maybe it's grace first and then the law. Because everything, everything starts with grace, the grace of God, the new life that we've been given in Christ, and flows from there. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, thank you for the reminder that these instructions for life that we call law in Scripture, that they are intended to enable us to, to live as your people, to live as, as a life that is good and, and blessed. You give them to us not as a, someone who's looking to punish us, but as someone who loves us, who made us, who knows us, who is encouraging us with each step of the way. We thank you for that grace of, of Jesus. And for receiving that in a way that we can love because he first loved us. We can serve because he came to serve us. We can give because he's given us all that we have. That, oh God, all that we do and all that we are would come through you as we receive this grace today. Grace that you give us freely through the power of your Holy Spirit through your great love for us and for this world that you call us to love and serve together. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.